Okay, ready? Henry Huggins, Chapter 3. Henry and the Nightcrawlers. When Henry came home from school one Friday late in September, he shook all his nickels and dimes and pennies out of a marble sack onto his bedspread. His expenses had been heavy and he knew he did not have much money left. The first thing he had done after finding Ribsy was to pay for his license and buy him a collar. Naturally, he didn't want his dog to eat from an old chipped dish, so he had spent 69 cents for a red plastic dish with D-O-G printed on it. This nearly exhausted his savings. He had spent his silver dollar on the guppies and all his allowance to take care of them. Then he had sold the guppies for $7 and spent all seven for the tank and thermostat for the catfish. At breakfast this morning, his father had given him his weekly 25 cent, his weekly 25 cents. Besides that, he had six cents saved from last week's allowance. He also had a nickel he had found in the park. And then there was his Canadian dime. He could try to spend that, but he hated to after keeping it almost a year. He might want to start a coin collection sometime. With the Canadian dime, he had 46 cents, not counting nine cents he could get, for three old milk bottles he had found in a vacant lot on the way home from school. It was not enough. Henry needed $13.95 plus 41 cents for tax. Henry needed all this money because he wanted to buy a football, a real football from a sporting goods store, not just a toy football from a department store. This time he wanted a genuine cowhide football stitched with nylon thread and laced with buckskin thongs. Every boy on Clickitat Street wanted one. As Henry looked at the money spread out on his bed, he heard someone calling, Henry! Henry went to the front door. There on the front porch stood Scooter McCarthy. Henry was surprised because Scooter didn't often come to play with them. He was a fifth grader and bigger than Henry. Henry was even more surprised when he saw what Scooter was holding, a real cowhide football stitched with nylon thread and laced with real buckskin thongs. Hi, Scoot, said Henry. Boy, oh boy, where did you get that football? My grandmother sent it to me for my birthday, answered Scooter. Your grandmother, Henry, could hardly believe it. My grandmother sends me sweaters and socks. My grandmother sends me keen presents. Come on out and throw some passes with me. Scooter pounded the football with his fist. It made a drum-like sound. Henry could hardly wait to touch the leather. When the boys, followed by Ribsy, went out to the sidewalk, Scooter ran up the street away and threw the ball back to Henry. It hit some branches that overhung the sidewalk, but Henry caught it anyway. The ball felt just right. It was big and solid and smelled of new leather. Henry lovingly ran his hands over its surface before he sent it sailing back to Scooter. The ball hit the branch again. I know what, said Scooter. If I went on the other side of the street and we threw it back and forth across the street, we wouldn't hit the trees. He tucked the ball under his arm as if he were running 90. Is my battery going? No, we're going to pause for just a second.